look at question 11. Diagram 8 shows 6 numbered cards. Find the number of different ways to arrange all cards in a row. So that means there's no condition here. So the answer is going to be um, 6 cards, right? So 6 factorial. So answer is 720 ways to arrange them. Okay. Second question. 4 cards are to be arranged. So you got 4 cards. We're only going to take 4 cards out of here. To be arranged to form a proper fraction such that even numbers are arranged side by side. Find the number of different proper fractions that can be formed. So first thing is they said it has to be even numbers side by side. So there's only two even numbers here. You have 2 and 6, correct? There's no more uh, even numbers. So we're going to use these two cards and another two cards because we only have 4, right? So another two cards to form our proper fraction. So, okay, so let's see the first scenario. How can we form proper fraction with four cards? The first scenario is when we have one on top and two at the bottom. Eh, sorry, three at the bottom because we want four cards, right? So we want three at the bottom. One, two, three. Okay, next, we another way is one, eh, sorry, two on top and two at the bottom. Okay, so let's do the first one first. Okay, the first scenario is when three cards is at the bottom. So we're going let's say we put here two and six. Okay, because they have to be side by side, right? Even numbers. So two and six together here. So when you have two and six there, how many cards are left? You got one, two, three, four more cards, correct? So out of the four cards, you have to pick one, right? To fill up this. Okay, after you have picked one, then you still have three more cards. So the three cards, you have to pick another one to fill up this. Correct? Okay, so now this is one scenario. But you can also switch place, right? These two. The two and six, you can switch place. So you have to times two. So from here, we know we have, um, we have 24 ways. Okay, now... So here is 2, 6 and also 6, 2. Uh. So we have already calculated for the first scenario. The second one is we can also put the 2 here and 6 here. Correct? So when we put the 2 here, 6 here, it's actually the same as 4P1 times 3P1. Why? Because if we put 2, 6 here, we have to choose out of the 4 cards, choose one to fill up here. And after we fill up here, we have 3 more cards. So the Three cards you have to pick one to fill here. So it's actually the same as this one. Because where after that you can also switch places, correct? So it's actually the same thing. So times two again you have twenty-four ways. So here you should already have forty-eight ways. Okay, so this is the first example. Huh? Now let's look at the second one. Now we have two on top and 2 at the bottom. Okay, wait, let me just scroll a bit. Okay, you have 2 on top and 2 on, at the bottom. Let's say we put 2 and 6 here. Okay, when we put 2 and 6 here, now, because this one has to be a proper fraction, so that means the top number here can only be 1, correct? Because if I put 5 here, it's going to be improper fraction. Or I put 7 is also improper. 9 is also improper. So I can only put 1 here. Okay. I can only put 1. So when I put 1, what is the only op what is the option here? What, um, what can I use for this remaining box? So I only got 3 more cards, right? So out of the 3 cards, you have to pick 1. So 3P1. Okay. So this one is... 6 ways. Okay. Now, oh sorry, it's not 6 ways. 3 ways. Sorry, I was thinking of 3 factorial. Yeah, 3 ways. Okay. Now, what if I switch to 6, 2 instead? Okay, instead of 2, 6, now I switch to 6, 2. Now, when I switch to 6, 2, the top number here, okay, okay the first number here, can only be either 5 or 1. 
correct either five or one so that means I've got two cards i have to pick one right so two p1 okay let me just erase that first two p1 two p1 times sorry yeah uh, two p1 so i've already picked one card for this so remaining how many three more cards right so multiply three p1 for the second card here okay so from here you can get 2p1 times 3p1 you should get your answer is six ways okay so from here this two itself you will have nine ways okay now we have to count another one more possibility which is when the six and two is on top okay because so far we've only done them at the bottom and also when three boxes on okay so now we have to do four when it's on top so now let's put two and six here so when i put two and six up here the first card here the bottom the denominator the first card can only be five or seven or nine correct either one of these so only three cards can to choose from so if I choose out of the three cards, so it's going to be 3P1, right? For the first card here to fill up. So after I've picked three, I will have another three more cards, right? One, two, three, four. So initially I had four cards to choose from, but now I have, I only used three of the cards to pick one. So I still have another remaining three cards. So the second one is going to be 3P1, okay? For the second card here, all right? So this one you should get nine ways okay now second thing what if we switch place between the two and the six so let's say i get six two so if i have six two so now the first card here can only be either seven or nine right because it has to be proper fraction so here can only be seven or nine so two cards i have to pick one and after I've picked one, I still got three more cards. So three cards, pick another one. Okay, so I should have two uh, p one six ways. So here itself will have fifteen ways. So in total, how many ways are there? So nine plus fifteen plus forty. So you should get your answer. Okay, let me count. Huh? 48 plus 9 plus 15. You should get 72 ways. So this is your answer. Right, next. Right, the combination of n object from m different objects is given by m and c. Eh, sorry, m, c, n. State the minimum value of n. So you see the n value, the n value is here, right? In case you cannot see, let me write out. It's written m, c, n. So what is n here? n is um, how many you're choosing la, out of the m number of objects, right? So what's the minimum value of n? Of course, n can be equals to 0. La. That's the smallest, correct? So this is your answer. Question 2. Sarah bought a box of colored pencil that contains p number of different colored pencils okay so one box contains p number of different color color pencils and given that the number of different ways for sarah to choose three pencils from the box is this find the value okay so she's going to choose three pencils out of the, the box so the box got p number of pencils right so a p number of pencils you're going to choose three of them okay and the pro the pro the what answer is this right that's what they said here so 26 26 p minus 2 okay so how are you going to solve this so um for those who don't know ncr the formula is what if you see ncr the formula is n factorial divided by n minus n minus r factorial times r factorial okay this is the formula 
and uh, if you forget about p and npr it's going to be n factorial over n minus r factorial okay so this is a difference lah. Oh, this one got no r this one got r this one got no r okay so in this case we are going to use the first formula because it's ncr so in this case it's going to be p factorial over p minus 3 factorial and 3 factorial equals to 26 p minus 2 okay so how are we going to solve this now for those who don't know what factorial means is if let's say i write 3 factorial huh? 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1 okay that means you're becoming smaller if i write 4 factorial it's going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 so it's always like minus 1 to get the next one minus 1 and then minus 1 okay so you have to understand this so that you can solve this question so now p factorial means what p factorial means p times p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 times p minus 3 and so on okay so i write that p factor p minus 3 factorial and here at the bottom i also have another p minus 3 factorial right and then here is 3 factorial equals 26 p minus 2 so what we can do is we can simplify this okay because it's going to be the same anyway so p minus 3 and then p minus 3 and on top of that we also have p minus 2 here and p minus 2 so if i bring o it's actually going to be divide so divide means i can cancel it out so what is left here right now is p so here i can expand p times p minus 1 so i have p square minus p over 3 factorial 3 factorial means 6 equals to 26 okay so what i have is p square minus p equals to 26 times 6 is 156 so i bring it put it together now i can factorize so when i factorize this i should get p minus 13 and p plus 12 so from here i know p is equals to 13 and p is equals to negative 12 but this one you have to reject or ignore why because there's no such thing as negative 12 as the p value here okay so the answer is 13 